Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I wanna give you a couple of tips to help you get the most out of the metronome or click track in Logic Pro. Probably the least sexiest thing of all the things we could talk about, and yet the metronome is such a crucial and fundamental piece to when we're recording and producing. Because the metronome basically provides us with that karaoke bouncing ball that we follow along to while we record. So the metronome counts us in, It gives us that guiding light to make sure that we're following the tempo of the project and also lets us know if the tempo changes over time. But of course we could use, you know, we could always use a little customization when it comes to the metronome. Maybe you need a different tonality so you can actually hear the thing in a dense mix. Maybe you need more of a count in or less. Perhaps you need to print or bounce down an actual audio file of the metronome. And you can do this in Logic. Many folks don't know that. And perhaps you're going from one tempo to the next, let's say 90 BPM to 120, and you need a count in of that 120 to help, you know, get you on the right pace. And by default, the metronome doesn't allow for this, but you can create your own custom tempo if you need to. And I want to show you all of this today. First, let's just cover the basics when it comes to the metronome and tempo in Logic Pro. If you look at the top control bar at the top of the Logic Pro window, we should see an LCD right in the middle with a numeric value. And in this case, it's 120, and that stands for beats per minute, BPM. And this is the tempo of the project. And I'm pretty sure just about any empty project starts at 120 BPM. Now you can change this value to whatever value you prefer just by double clicking and typing in your preferred value. Or you can just click, hold, and drag up or down with the mouse to set it to a particular value. Now, this is a very, you know, hard and fast, like 165, 120. We can get finer resolution. We just need to customize the LCD. So if we right click or control click anywhere in the control bar here, the empty section of the control bar, we get a drop down menu with the option to customize the control bar. And under the LCD column here, we have a drop down menu and we have many options to choose from, but I'm going to go with custom because I like to customize my LCD. In this case, we just wanna make sure to enable the tempo section. And you can see now that we have 165 plus four decimal points beyond 165. So we can get pretty fine tuned if we need to. If we just click and drag on one of these values, look at that, we can get 164.8387. And I assume this would be perfect for things like film cues where, you know, things that happen in movie scenes don't line up with a musical grid. But for what I do, you know, I'm always working with basically intervals of five, 120, 125, so on and so forth. We also have two buttons right in here in the control bar for the count in and the metronome. And we know that they're on when they're purple and they're off just by clicking on them and they're gray. So purple for on, gray for off. And if you don't see those buttons in the control bar, just right click again or control click, customize the control bar. And under the modes and functions column, we have right here, the ability to show or hide the count in or click. Up until now, I probably told you everything you already know, right? But maybe you didn't know that there are more options related to the count in and the metronome just by right clicking or control clicking the buttons themselves. So in this case, if we right click the metronome button, we have a drop-down menu with four different options plus metronome settings, which we'll dig into. And in my case, I have the metronome set to simple mode. And when simple mode is enabled, the three other options are disabled. And I like simple mode just because if the click is on, if this is purple, it's on all of the time. And if it's off, it's off all of the time. There's no if, ands, or buts. So if I press play and then use key command K to disable or enable the metronome, we'll hear it come in and out of the picture. Here we go. And if I press R for record, it continues on. It's just on all the time or off all the time. But perhaps you want a more customized experience using the click. Again, control click or right click the metronome button. And let's disable simple mode. And now we have three other options for click while recording as we would expect or just during the count in. And we can disable or enable to click while playback. So let's turn off click while playback. 
And if I hit play, we won't hear the metronome, but if I hit R to record, we will. Cool, let's go ahead and now enable only during count-in. Now the count-in is enabled, and when I hit R for record, we'll hear four beats for the count-in, and then we won't hear the metronome again. Lots of opportunity for customization. Also, if you control or right-click the count-in button, you have as few of a count-in as no count-in, up to six bars, and you can even set it on a per beat basis. So maybe you just want one beat and then into recording. That's all the count in you need. Maybe you need nine beats before we begin recording. So let's set this to one beat and hit record and we'll only hear one beat of the count in. Easy. Go up to maybe six beats or five beats. All right. So there's lots of customization and if you right click, on the metronome button and go to metronome settings or go to file, project settings, and metronome. You have just all of the options that we've just discussed. So I'm gonna enable simple mode, but you can also adjust the tone or the note of the click on a per bar basis, a per group or per beat or even per division. So I'm not gonna dig too far into these, but Mainly what I'm most concerned with is the tone and the volume of the metronome. I personally prefer my metronome to be very obvious in the mix. I know that that could be a problem with headphone bleed, but I just want it to be completely obvious. So I like to set the tone all the way up. But let's start at the very bottom and hit play. And let's hear what it sounds like as we adjust the tone. Cool. And volume is pretty obvious, pretty self-evident, right? Okay. At the moment, the metronome is just playing at one consistent tempo, but maybe your project has different tempos throughout the project. We can customize this using the global track lanes. And if we go to the button right here and click on it, we should see a tempo track lane. And if you don't just again, control or right click and you can enable or disable the tempo track lane. Cool. Now we can get as fine tuned as we need to just by clicking on the line here of the tempo track lane. And we'll adjust this pretty fast. We'll go up to like maybe 300s. And then if we click again, I'm gonna drag it way down. So it's below the original tempo. And if we take this node right here and start to move it, we can actually create a sloping effect in terms of tempo. So it's ramping down. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like. And I just wanna make sure that these align up to the bar. Here we go. Okay, that's pretty slow, so let's bump it up a hair. Okay, that's probably a bit better. All right, so we've customized our metronome in terms of tonality, in terms of playback, the count in, we've adjusted the tempo. Maybe you need to actually print an actual audio file of the metronome because maybe you're passing this along to a mix engineer maybe just for safekeeping. Many folks don't know that this is possible in Logic. It doesn't take much effort. We dig into the mixer and go right here on these three tabs at the top of the mixer. We have single, tracks, and all. We're going to click on the all tab and this reveals to us everything going on under the hood in the mixer, right? We see a preview section and that's for the Apple loops. So when you preview Apple loops, that's where it plays. We also have a click that's solo safe. You can solo safe any track just by control clicking and that means that it will play back no matter what. So the click, you know, is on all of the time, but based on the metronome button being disabled or enabled. Also, one other thing I just wanna point out, let's actually bring in an Apple loop, let's squash things up a bit, and let's bring in this bass loop. And if we go to functions, Go down to selection-based processing. This allows us to, you know, create custom plugin chains to bounce in place just for a section of an audio file or MIDI region or anything else. But if you look in the mixer under the alt tab, we now have our selection-based processing, A and B processing. The mixer houses everything under the hood, under this alt tab. That's all I wanna point out to you in case you wanna get crafty with the selection-based processing. 
What we're most concerned with is the click channel strip. There's a channel strip dedicated to the click, the instrument, the Klopfgeist. And this is, you know, you can access everything related to the metronome with this plugin window if you prefer that over the project settings window. Things like the tonality, the tuning, polyphonic, monophonic, etc. What we want to do now is, is right click or control click the channel strip for the click. And now we want to go to create track. And what this does is, is we create a track lane for the click. So if we disable the metronome and hit play, we're not going to hear the metronome and we're not going to see on the metronome's channel strip here any sort of playback. If we enable it, we should see and hear it play. Cool. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to bounce the click track lane in place to create an audio file of the click. So I'm just going to squash up the project here just so things aren't too crazy when we bounce. And if we go to file, go down to bounce, track in place, let's just bounce the click and see what happens. There it is, we have our click. So let's disable the click and hear it play back with this audio file. There it is for safekeeping, for passing along whatever you need. Now, of course, the faster section and the slower section look exactly the same as everything else. You know, there, there's no difference in the way it's presented to us in this audio region. And that's because Audio regions, their visuals follow the tempo. So if we get rid of these tempo nodes here, we should see things start to adapt. So now we can see a much faster click, slower click. So the audio region changes visually, but the playhead doesn't speed up or slow down because we're at a consistent tempo. This is an important detail in just a moment here. So if we backtrack, here we have our custom audio file of our custom tempo. And now I wanna create a count in into this faster tempo, right? Because we're going from 120 to 355, which is completely unrealistic, but this is on purpose. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to chop up the audio region here because let's say that the tempo track, we just want a consistent 355. So let me just get rid of those. And you can see that audio regions are starting to change shape and that's important. Back up here, we make sure to just get rid of that guy and that guy. And let's get rid of everything else. So there's our tempo for the faster tempo that we need to lead in for, right? And let's actually chop this so we have a perfect, you know, four beats. And then we can use key command, command R to repeat the section, right? And I'm even going to bounce this region in place to a new track. So now we have our faster tempo that we're gonna use for a lead in from a BPM of 120 to 355. At this point, if we start to drag this region, you can see that things are starting to get a little crazy. And the region size and visual changes because it expands and contracts to fill and follow along with the tempo. It's not following the tempo, so to speak, for example, if we turn on the click here and we start this from bar seven, it's not gonna play back at the same tempo unless you turn on flex and follow. It's just the visual changes. So if you need you know, a one bar or two bar count in into the faster tempo for playback, in this case, you're gonna wanna get real close and you're gonna wanna watch the visual and you're gonna wanna make sure to line up that first be right with the grid, right? So now we have our two bar count in into this faster tempo. In fact, we split it and then we can loop it and everything should be pretty much on the grid. And let me get rid of the actual metronome so we can just hear this bounced version. So you're going to have to get pretty fine tuned about the placement because, you know, we want to make sure it's landing exactly on the grid and not changing time over time. But that in a nutshell is exactly how you go about customizing the metronome, 
getting the tonality and the count in that you need, and also being able to bounce the metronome in place so you can you know, keep it around just in case, be able to fine tune it so you can get a count in that works for you. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.